Our youth have done a wonderful job for us this morning, have they not? Thank you, Attic. Thank you. I remind you that many adults will not do this. That's fact. And so we appreciate them so much coming up here and sharing with us and leading us in worship. I also want to thank everyone who has just helped beautify our church so, so well. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, the sanctuary and throughout the building, we thank you for that. And uh, we've had a big weekend for all that helped make movie night last Friday night uh, so smooth and uh, no glitches and um, also uh, second Saturday supper last night. Well done, well done. I read about a poor, a poor country pastor who was just absolutely livid, livid when he confronted his wife with the receipt for a $250 dress that she had bought. How could you do this? He exclaimed. I don't know, she wailed. I was standing in the store looking at the dress and then I just found myself trying it on. It was like the devil was whispering to me, gee, you look great in that dress. You should buy it. Well, the pastor persisted. You know how to deal with him. Just tell him, get thee behind me, Satan. She said, I did. But then he said, well, it looks great from back here, too. <laughs> well, excitement. Excitement is building on this third Sunday of Advent. Children have undoubtedly made out their Christmas wish lists of all the wonderful things they desire. And most of us, young and old, have no problem sharing our wish list with anyone who asks. I heard about one dad who was shopping in a toy store. He said, that's a terrific train set. I think I'll buy it. And the clerk said, well, great. I'm sure that your son is going to just love it. The young father paused for a moment and replied, well, maybe you're right. I'll take two. <laughs> it's an exciting time of the year, isn't it? It's an exciting time of the year, but it's not, it's just not uh, a season that's uh, filled with frustrations, too. It's, there's plenty of frustrations out there, isn't there? I experienced them, you experienced them. Years ago, the Associated Press carried a story about a group of post office customers who mutinied while waiting in line, according to those who were there, the lines were quote unquote moving slower than paint dries and one man said it was like watching grass grow. There were 26 patrons, 26 patrons jammed into two lines. They realized they weren't getting enough attention so a 73 year old man organized the group and in an uncommon show of unity, the 26 patrons shouted together, we want service. We want service. And two minutes later, another clerk ambled out and without crackling a smile said, next, next. Well, the 26 patrons knew they were onto something, so they tried it again and again, and you guessed it, one more clerk appeared. And an amused customer summed up the situation like this. I got through that line in four minutes. I've never seen anything like it. I hope I haven't given any of you ideas on that. <laughs> lines. Lines, friends, could still seem unreasonably long at many post offices, particularly during the Christmas season. And the writer of James, a scripture lesson for this morning, James gives this counsel, be patient. Be patient, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains? You, too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. We're an impatient people. We're an impatient people, aren't we? If you don't think so, just take a little excursion to the mall. 
and see how patient you think people are who are going about their shopping. We're a fast food society. We're a microwave society, a broadband internet society. We want what we want, and we want it right now. And we cannot imagine, we can't even imagine the children of Israel waiting patiently. Friends, this went on for hundreds of years. Waiting patiently for hundreds of years for the coming of the Messiah. 43 times in the Old Testament alone, the people are commanded to wait. Wait. Wait on the Lord. And now in the New Testament, James is offering the exact same counsel. The truth is, members of the early church, members of the early Christian church were less patient than the people of Israel had been. They expected Christ to return in their lifetime. It was imminent. It could happen at any moment. And now they were aging. And Christ still had not come back. And so the leaders of the church continually counseled patience. Patience, and patience is very important. Have any of you, have any of you sat beside the bedside of someone you love who had a life-threatening illness? It is a helpless, helpless feeling. And sometimes all you can do is wait. Wait and trust God. And such times call for patience. But it's hard, hard, hard to be patient. Sadly, it seems most often to show patience to those we love. Showing patience to our spouses. Showing patience to our children. Perhaps even our aging parents. Zelig Pliskin in his book, Kindness, Making a Difference in People's Lives, tells about his difficulty having patience with a close relative who was suffering, suffering from Alzheimer's disease. This relative would ask questions and forget the answers outright in just a few minutes. Well, Pliskin was finding it difficult to answer the things, same, those same questions over and over and over. Then he recalled an idea an idea that he heard from an expert on self-improvement. It seems there was once a great sage who would repeat each idea to a slow student 400 times. 400 times. Now imagine that, going over and over and over the exact same material 400 times. Once in a teaching session, the student was distracted by someone who came to meet with his teacher. And the sage told the uh, visitor that he would be free after he finished teaching his student. Well, after the usual 400 reviews, he asked his student if he understood, if he understood that day's lesson. And the student said that the interruption Interruption by the visitor greatly distracted him, and he could not concentrate as well as he usually did. Well, don't worry. Don't worry, the teacher replied. I'll repeat the idea even another 400 times. Now, why did this great teacher spend so much time with this limited student, asked Pliskin. Well, the expert on self-improvement explained that the exercise was partially for the sage's own benefit. Each and every time, each and every time he repeated an idea, the sage was building up his own ability, his own ability to be patient as James recommends. Wow. Wow. Most of us have not reached that kind of spiritual or emotional maturity. We're like the old saying, I want patience and I want it right now. We need to see that patience, patience, friends, is a success tool. If you're too impatient, if you're too impatient in your professional life, you'll make more than your share of mistakes. If you're too impatient in your personal life, you could do great damage to important relationships. You may remember the famous 
the famous marshmallow test. Marshmallow test that was in the headlines a few years back. A four-year-old, a four-year-old is in a room with some marshmallows and told that the experimenter has to go run an errand. If the four-year-old can wait till the examiner returns, he can have two marshmallows. If he wants to eat right now, he can, but he, can, he only gets one. This would pose a dilemma for anyone of any age. Have one marshmallow now or delay gratification and get two. Well, kids would develop all kinds of strategies to enable them to wait. They'd sing songs, they'd tell stories to themselves, they would play with their fingers. And what's most amazing is the impact, the impact that this one character trait displayed at the age of four had on the lives of those who were part of this experiment. A Stanford University research team tracked these children for many, many years, and those who were able to wait as four-year-olds grew up to be more socially competent, better able to cope with stress, and far less likely to give up under pressure than those who could not wait. The marshmallow grabbers grew up to be more stubborn and indecisive, more easily upset by frustration, and more resentful about not getting enough. Most amazingly, the group of marshmallow waiters had SAT scores that averaged 210 points higher than the group of marshmallow grabbers. Patience. Patience is, is an important, important quality. People who, aren't, people who aren't able to control their impulses, unable to withstand tedium, unwilling to allow others to progress at a different pace, they're going to make everybody around them unhappy. And they'll make many, many friends avoidable, avoidable mistakes in their life. When it comes right down to it, the Advent and Christmas season is about waiting. It's about patience. It's a time when we need to particularly seek patience with the Advent reads all about. What is it but a countdown? This may seem like a stressful time, and it is. It seems like a stressful time for many of us. So much to do, presents to buy, parties to attend, family coming in, increased traffic around shopping areas. Perhaps you're feeling the squeeze of finances. Maybe this, maybe this is your first Christmas without someone you loved very much. And the griefs come back all over again. This could be a difficult, difficult time of year for many and the feelings of stress can cause us to lash out at those around us or to ignore them. How badly, how badly many of us need patience, especially, especially with those that we love. There are some words attributed, attributed to Robert Keishan, better known to America as Captain Kangaroo. I think this is the first time I've ever quoted him in a sermon. And this might uh, help us to remember, helps me, remember during this busy season, things to remember. He said, quote, a small child waits with impatience the arrival home of a parent. She wishes to relate some sandbox experience. She's excited to share the thrill that she has known that day. The time comes, the parent arrives. Beaten down by the stresses of the workplace, the parent often replies, not now, honey, I'm busy, go watch television. The most often spoken words in the American household today are the words, go watch television. If not now, when? Later. But later never comes for many. And the parent fails to communicate at the very earliest of ages. We give her designer clothes and computer toys, but we don't give her what she wants the most, which is our time. 
Now she's 15 and has a glassy look in her eyes. Honey, do we need to sit down and talk? Too late. Love has passed by. Now that'd be a tragic thing. That'd be a tragic thing to happen in our families this Christmas season. The writer of the epistle of James gives this counsel. Be patient. Be patient. And we need that counsel. We need it in our families. We need it in the workplace. We need it in all our human activities, all of our relationships. Friends, the writer of James is talking about a very specific kind of patience. He writes, be patient, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains? You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. See, the most lasting patience of all is patience that's rooted in the promises of God. Jewish psychiatrist Viktor Frankl was imprisoned in a Nazi concentration camp. And when he was arrested, as you might imagine, he's stripped of everything. Property, family, all possessions. The Nazis even forced the prisoners to give up their clothes. Frankl had spent years, years researching and writing a book. His manuscript, which he had hidden in the lining of his coat, was taken away. And he ended up inheriting the worn out rags of another inmate who had been sent to the gas chamber. And said Frankel, quote, instead of the many pages of my manuscript, I found in the pocket of the newly acquired coat a single page torn out of a Hebrew prayer book which contained the Shema the daily Jewish prayer. That's the prayer that goes, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And finding this page torn from a Jewish prayer book was the turning point for Viktor Frankl, who gave him strength, strength to go on. Friends, many, many outstanding people over the past 2,000 years have found that their faith gave them the ability to be patient under trying circumstances. And the most lasting patience of all is patience that's rooted in the promises of God. That's a gift I would wish for all of us this Advent Christmas season. Be patient, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient. Stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.